As of the making of this video, Item Asylum currently has 11 bosses to fight. You get massive amounts of points for beating them in public servers, and cool badges if you perfect run them in private servers. Oh, and there's also the exclusive weapon awards too, I guess. But what if I told you, there's a secret 12th boss hidden deep inside the game. You might already know about this if you're caught up in the Item Asylum craze, but for those who don't, allow me to tell you about Item Asylum's secret boss fight. Now, before I tell you how to access this boss, we're gonna need some background. This boss is a part of the official collab between Item Asylum and another game, Midnight Horrors. I assume you get something in Midnight Horrors when you beat this boss, but I'm honestly too lazy to check. I don't really like the game, to be honest. Anyways, the first people to find this hidden boss were these people as a collective group find. Upon this boss's release and discovery, you were able to attain three badges related to the event. The first badge, Triangulation, is attained by discovering and unlocking the boss. The second badge, Red Pyramid Piece, is obtained when beating the boss. And the final badge, named Transient Triangle Red, was only available for the first hour of this boss's release. So, uh, pretty unlucky for those who were sleeping during this time. Anyway, enough of the yapping. Let's actually get to how to access this boss to get those two sweet, sweet badges. Because, uh, you already ran out of time for the third one. First, you're going to have to go through all of these maps and lobbies to find all the hidden pets. Backrooms, Beef, Mandrel, Townie, Rocket Arena, and Crossroad. I recommend doing it all in this order as it follows the cycle of lobby to map, making it so you don't have to spam end round when you're trying to get to the next area. For the first two, anyway. Now, let's get on with it. When you're in the back rooms, you're going to have to find this light switch near the back wall and click on it to toggle the lights. There's a small chance that a pet will appear in the center of the room when the lights are turned on, so I actually don't recommend using an auto-clicker as the pet can disappear when the lights are turned off. Usually though, with enough patience, you can acquire your first pet. After that, you're going to want to go to the map Beef. You're going to want to give yourself a cheeseburger and hold it towards the entrance tunnel in the play area. Eventually, the second pet will appear and eat the cheeseburger, and your kindness is rewarded by letting you acquire it. Now, getting a pet in the lobby Mandrill is pretty easy. You're just going to need to give yourself Dr. Pepper to gain a massive speed boost to catch the pet while it's walking towards the end of the maze. You can do it at normal speed, but I just like doing it fast. You brought justice to this lobby. It was about to steal 40 cakes. That's as much as 4 tens. That's terrible. The pet you obtain in Townie is also surprisingly simple. If you check the wiki anyway. You can press the tacos at the taco stand near the parking lot to make them glow, and when this specific pattern of tacos are activated, the pet appears out of the stand and your perseverance allows you to obtain it. These last two pets are the most complicated, however. Starting with Rocket Arena, there should be an NPC named Bloodhound roaming around the map moving all over the place. If anything dies within its radius, and I mean anything, a red orb separates from the corpse and Bloodhound absorbs it. I recommend giving yourself one-shot dummies, a Dr. Pepper, and Michael P, which allows you to catch up to Bloodhound, spawn a bunch of one-shot dummies, and kill them all with Michael P. Once Bloodhound absorbs 66 dying souls and it reaches a spawn location, it plunges into the platform, and after a while, your penultimate pet should appear. You're brave for killing all these dummies, you know? I could never. Except, uh, I just did. Finally, we're at Crossroads. This one's a bit of a hiccup, so stay with me here. There are three glowing pyramids labeled Strange Beacon located inside the mountain, Ruin Building, and Castle Watchtower. You should give yourself Hellgate, and then activate all these three beacons in that order. You should do it as fast as physically possible, as you can miss out and be a bit too slow very easily. You can get two other people to do it with you to bypass this issue, but you're going to have to trust their integrity to actually do what they need to, and also get some friends in the first place. The activated beacons should now eventually emit white beams pointing above the tower and form a triangle, which becomes a portal that sends down the final pets. Congratulations! Your determination allows you to get all of the pets. Now, you just need to go to the even care lobby and check if the door in the back is open. If it's still locked, then you might have missed a pet. If it's open, then go right through. Now, you're going to have to descend down this trapdoor and you're on your merry way. Now, you might have noticed that not only are you in a completely new lobby, but also that you're the only one in the server. This is intentional, as this boss is the only one where you have to fight it solo. So, uh, good luck. Enter Dog Lyria, the 
secret boss. It references a bunch of things, such as the boss Delirium from The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, plus the Smile Dog Creepypasta, etc. Now, let's get this out of the way. Did I enjoy this boss? Kind of. It's definitely more fun than the likes of Matter and Ouija, but I definitely think it gets pretty annoying at some parts, especially when you bring him down to, like, less than 2,000 health. But, I mean, to be fair, almost every boss has at least one thing annoying about it. 10 Hour Burstman has his bullshit hitboxes, Clef Prime has his You Can't Escape, Uncertified as Kami Dummies, the Skeleton as its third phase, you get the deal. So, I'd at least cut this boss some slack. Not to stop me for criticizing it though, like the terrible person I am. Before we get to that though, let's go through a quick overview of the boss. Your only weapon is the real knife, and you have to get rid of Doglerium's 8000 HP with 3 lives. It's, uh, quite a bit. Let's just get to his attacks, though. We'll be using the terms that the IA Wiki gave it for convenience. First, Strum. This is the music note attack, and I got good news and bad news for you. Bad news is that it's nearly impossible to dodge. Good news is that it does zero damage and only knocks you back slightly. However, it can ragdoll you and catch you off guard if you're not careful. Which is why you should probably stay near the center or probably just near the boss and facing away from the all-consuming void. I don't suggest going too near the edges at all, actually, because this boss relies on knockback, which is basically this attack's entire thing. So, uh, don't get caught off guard. This boss is an expert at that. You probably shouldn't waste your determination slashes on this attack, as if you get ragged out during your attack, you can really mess it up, and there goes your cooldown. I suggest just going up close and try getting as many hits as possible. Now, while Strum is easily the least threatening attack in his arsenal, Bazooka isn't. You get hit once by its shots and Team Rocket's blasting off again. This is my way of saying almost guaranteed death. However, this attack is the absolute best opportunity to deal in major damage. Spam everything, including determination slashes, as despite being a ranged ability, it's even better up close. After a while, though, you're going to need to back off a bit and retreat to one of the quarters. This is basically a safe spot since the rockets usually aim more towards the middle. This strategy doesn't have a 100% success rate, though, so do still be cautious. Its screech attack is by far the easiest to avoid, and it's another opportunity to deal damage, but can be a little unpredictable as to when Doglarium actually screams it deals damage. It deals 10 damage and also decreases your max HP by 10, so you're probably not going to want to get hit by it. Not that you really want to get hit at all, but my point still stands. I suggest rushing in and getting damaged for a couple seconds before retreating and using your ability to hit him from afar. The next attack is Slash! Don't be fooled by it being easy as hell in the start, as in the later half of the boss, your time to react will get exponentially smaller. I don't really have much tips for this attack other than have good reaction time, but you can actually still damage the boss while he's using the attack. Just make sure to be able to differentiate his thin hitboxes from all the thicker slash hitboxes. Oh yeah, this attack also instantly kills you. Hooray. Our last attack we'll be covering is Maul. It's so fucking stupid I fucking hate it! You should treat Maul as sort of like Pig's projectile and man of nature. Stay far away from him and move in one direction, then the other at the last second. If you want a more visual cue as to when to switch directions, focus on the timer in the red lock-on symbol and switch as soon as the timer hits one second. If he does manage to hit you, you're stuck in an embarrassingly long cutscene where he takes a huge amount of your health. And by the way, you get ragdoll after this. So you're completely open to other attacks and are basically dead if you're later on in the fight. If Doglerium is low, this move is basically instant. So in this case, just do my strategy except much faster. This move is a pain to deal with. Well, that's all the attacks. They start off slow and easy, but as you progress into the boss, they become exceptionally faster and more difficult to survive, making attacks like Maul and Slash extremely annoying to deal with. The bright side, though, is that because of this exponential difficulty curve, you can usually get rid of half of this HP without any issue, and only really start the boss afterward. My general word of advice for those who want to beat this boss is be as aggressive as possible. Use a Rage Mirror to the fullest and get super up close to the boss and maybe a moderate distances to avoid Screech and Maul later on. This boss is pretty enjoyable, but some attacks like the two I just mentioned can feel pretty unfair at times. As a wise orange fox guy once said, Failure as a game should always feel like it's your own fault, never the game's. Overall though, I had a pretty fun time with this boss. It's a cool concept with a pretty cool execution, with only a few issues that break it down a bit. Beating Doglerium took me around 5-7 to seven tries to beat it, and if I were to rank a hypothetical perfect run on my over 6 month difficulty list, I'd probably rank it right above Man of Nature. 
Wow, I really need to switch a lot of these placements around. What was I thinking by the Trash King at 3? Well, that's practically all my thoughts on the Dogalarium secret boss. I'm terribly sorry for being dead for the past three months, as school and finals are really catching up to me, and a lot of responsibilities are piling up for me. Moving on to summer break, though, I will definitely try to get more videos out sooner rather than later. If you'd like to support me, mostly giving me motivation, you can buy my Roblox merch down in the description. Thanks for tuning in, and here's to hoping I can keep Inem Asylum interesting.